Hi everyone, Alexandra Cote here again. Today we are reviewing Miro and I should have done this review quite a while ago but the thing is I don't love this tool as much as I should. You can use Miro for a bunch of purposes and to just get an idea of how you can use it you can look through the templates here. Now, generally, you can use the tool to create mind maps and just visual representations of your ideas, for example, for brainstorming, mapping, but you can also use it for task management purposes. Now, yes, you can create a Kanban flow in it, you can create product roadmaps, but there's just better tools out there to do this efficiently. We are going to see how every feature in Miro works, just so you can understand why so far the tool is not the best from a user experience point of view in the sense that it does take longer to use Miro than other alternatives. Now to get started, as usual, we're going to look through the entire interface. So on the left side here, you can create your own team. For example, in my case, an agency SEO team. If you work with a team or with clients, you will have to pay for this tool. You can stick to just using it for free independently. However, this does give you limited collaboration opportunities. At the top here, you have again the option to upgrade and to invite team members. Again, if you have a paid account and you will also have some options for apps, integrations and even to create your own add-ons via the API. Moving on to the actual dashboard, you have here your profile options just to get these out of the way. And then you have options to create new projects. Again, this is for paid accounts or to just use this common dashboard for all of your boards. Or you can just start a board like this and then you can go and find it under the start boards option. Now to get started, you have the classic option of starting from scratch or choosing among the templates. Now keep in mind, the search here at the top is different from the one in Canva, for example. If you use the search at the top, you search mostly among the boards you already have. Well, if you look at the templates, this is where you need to go if you want to find new templates. Let's see if we can find something for task management. And yes, we have a couple of options. Let's just go with maybe an action plan. You can always preview it to actually see what it looks like because the template representation is very minimalistic. So you don't get an actual idea of what the final version looks like. So we are going to choose this one. I'm going to click on create a share board. And this is where the not so fun part starts. Now at first sight, the interface is quite intuitive to you. So you have on the left side, your general editing options. And as always, when you click on an element, you will get extra options for that specific element. And then here at the top, you have some general administrative options like sharing your post or just kind of checking out who the board owner is and bringing more people to collaborate on this piece. Also note you always have the guide at the top here to help you use Miro to its full potential. To go through every feature, you have obviously the select option, which will help you, as mentioned, select the element you want to add it and move things around. And I'm moving this to the side because then you'll have the templates options. So what this does is actually super handy. You can bring in another template to your main dashboard. So you can actually zoom in and zoom out of this just using your mouse scroll or through these options at the bottom. And you can use this to create maybe a common dashboard for all things related to a project or to a team and just keep everything under one single place. When you have a lot of things here, it can get difficult for people to move between these. So I do recommend keeping up to three, four elements within a single 
dashboard. Then you have the obvious text options. Now this is super simple. You can just add text wherever you want to, even if it doesn't necessarily fit with the initial template. But here is where things start to just go crazy. For example, right now my computer is basically stuck. Usually what I do in case of problems like these is to just refresh the page. And here you'll see the template loading with the type something areas where I actually added the text boxes. As you can see, they even moved this template automatically. You can always just go on and delete all of these, but I'm going to keep one so I can actually show you how the text editing works. Obviously you can add again, text from here, or you can just go on and select text that's already in here. Let's just try adding text again. I'm going to create kind of a placeholder like that and hopefully, nope, this time it didn't work. So again, yes, you just have to drop it basically as soon as possible. And then here at the top, you have your basic editing options. And I'm just going to maybe switch the background for this text. You can always just create notes from here and any kind of shape. So you can turn, for example, this box here, you can always turn it into a different element. Let's try another one and see if it works. So I do get these, but it took me quite a while to actually get the element. Let's see if it works with something I just added. Yes, so this is going to work, but Miro is definitely having a harder time helping you change things that are within the template. Again, from here, you have some extra options for how you want to edit the text. I'm deleting this and this because I just have way too many elements now. The next option is the ever so popular sticky note. And this is fun to use, not gonna lie. It's perfect if you want a free tool to list down your ideas. And of course, you have lots of options in here to work with these notes elements. And if you go on top of any note, for example, here or here, collaborators can come in and uh, use maybe an emoji to approve or not of your idea. So you can kind of use these emojis to get feedback from your team. And also you can use it to add tags like marketing. Always just change the colors for these tags to differentiate them. Another simple option is to just add a shape. Now this can be anything. And again, you can always change it to something else if you need them for better highlighting of your talk. Of course, you have your arrows, which will also be super handy. Notice that you can connect them among elements. So for example, you can have this element here at the middle and just connect it to this. If you click on any of these, you will have your editing option. So you can go as crazy as you want. And when you add them, you also have these blue arrows here so that it's easy for you to highlight the relation between these notes. Now, another option is the pen tool, which is handy for, you know, writing whatever. You have a highlighter as well. We have some smart drawing options. So for example, if you draw a shape, like kind of a square, the tool is supposed to straighten it. It doesn't always work perfectly. So if you, for example, create a house like this, it's not exactly going to look the way you want it. So you need to create the shapes independently, basically. And then hopefully it will work because in this case, it doesn't work since it's not a um, connected shape in here. So there's still some small problems with this tool. Then obviously you have your eraser, which doesn't really work as intuitively as you would think. So for example, it does delete this, it deletes the highlights, but it doesn't work with this smart drawing option because to delete what you created with the smart drawing tool, you have to go to the same option and you'll see here the method to erase. So you just have to go like this and basically there's multiple ways of erasing elements, but the problem is that this common eraser doesn't work with everything. Another thing is you can go on top of the note, let's say, and come in and add comments. And this works for, you know, anything you have. Maybe you want to leave a comment here 
Now, there is no other way of doing this. You can indeed schedule maybe a task, but comments are done just this way. So you can leave a comment, whatever, with an emoji or not. Maybe your manager or teammate can come in and just click on the comment and then you can leave multiple comments here. Just edit the colors for the comments so that they don't add up because if you come in and add lots of other comments everywhere, you're just going to have the same green stuff and it's difficult to differentiate between these nodes. You can always also add a pin option. Now, I'm not 100% sure what the pin option does. I think it keeps the comment open all of the time. I don't know if this is a bug or if this is how the feature is supposed to work, but it's definitely not the most straightforward way of doing it. And from here, you can always just follow a thread or unfollow using this bell here. And once a comment is resolved, you can just click on resolve and you're done. And basically it disappears from the board so it's not super cluttered. Now, if you don't want to use templates, you can always create your own from scratch with this grid option. And what it does is it adds frames to your dashboard. And it's super handy because you can also create, for example, a browser frame like this. And then you will come in and add your elements here. For the frames, I recommend naming them, such as whatever browser, template, whatever you want to. And you can also opt to have the frame or grid, whatever you want to call it, show the device. So it's just super clear for you. You can then obviously upload your own uh, images or there's just a lot of options to bring in your own pictures. Finally, you have the apps option which is handy if for example you want to use stock photos from unsplash you won't find them under photos or anything like that they are here under apps and you can bring them onto your dashboard double click on them to maybe cut them and then just move them around as you wish some other interesting options are just the simple mind map app and this is a default from um, miro what it does is you write your ideas here and anyone can come in and continue writing their ideas related to your main topic. And you can just start adding more elements as you wish, connecting stuff. It just works like the other elements in Miro. You also have a wireframe library. You can come in and use, for example, this official wireframe option and add, you know, an avatar, some tabs, a toggle button and maybe some text boxes and a button maybe instead of the toggle and of course you have your classic placeholders whatever you want to use and icons of course don't forget about these you can look for something like flower or whatever and the library isn't the best I do recommend maybe looking through these and kind of seeing if you can find some of their names so you can remember them. Or you can always just bring on your own icons. There's also just the Google image search, a Kanban board, emojis if you want to use maybe something that's larger like this. This is not exactly super handy, but you can always just get extra apps and connect them to your Miro dashboard. So you can have the Miro dashboard for brainstorming or mind mapping in Zoom. You can connect it to Figma. Figma actually has their own whiteboard tool. Now, the tool is obviously not as advanced as Miro, but you can use it for, you know, basic notes and brainstorming and you don't necessarily have to pay for an extra tool to have the basic stuff done. You know, you can use this for your team independently. It doesn't have the same features as Miro, but it's just if you need some basic whiteboarding options. There's just a lot of integrations you can choose from. This is why people opt for Miro. It's easy to connect with whatever else they're doing. And you can always just build your own app. Now, some other features you could find handy are just editing your options in here. So, for example, if you don't use the frame options, you can just take the frame from there and bring maybe charts on. 
and then when you need a chart you can just drag it whatever this is simple to use you also have some notes on the side which is perfect if you have to create maybe a to-do list a meeting agenda and you can always share this with the rest of your team and people can come in and um, have a look at this. So it's just one extra way of keeping everything in order. Generally, what you will find difficult to use is just getting used to moving around. Yes, some templates are really good. You can use them without a problem. But really, if you're not going to use these templates, I don't see the purpose of using Miro unless you just want a simple free version but remember even the free version is limited to a couple of boards so you can have only up to four as far as i remember this is it everyone i recommend you go into miro and kind of test the features and see how it works there's also features that don't really pop out like if you click on this arrow at the bottom here you have some options to like present it add a timer have it connected to a video chat, uh, have voting. So it kind of looks like you could use it for all team communication purposes. And this is what Miro is trying to do to add more extra features to help you do your work in this tool. But unless you're someone who likes visuals a lot and is not bothered by having to learn how to use this tool properly it might be difficult for every single team member to get used to this and especially if you bring on collaborators who maybe haven't worked with Miro before they will have a super hard time working with it so this is it everyone I wouldn't recommend using this tool honestly it's just a lot to handle some teams do use it and find it super helpful and yes it's easy to use if you have for example let's see if we can find a template for team building purposes you can use it that way most of the time it's for um you know business purposes but you can kind of use it for fun activities as well to get your um, team to just share ideas have a team building activity together whatever However, do keep in mind that everything is just, let's just put it this way, it's not the most fun tool out there, even though it looks like that. Again, you can try it yourself, see if you can get used to it, maybe try it with your team and test it out, and then get their feedback to see if they like using it, because you don't want to force your team to use it. And this is it really. Let me know if there's any other tool you want me to review. Don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Have a great day.